So now, here's our own thought experiment. Follow along with me. We're just going to play a game together. Let's go through this for a second. And you tell me if you don't agree with me, right? And if you don't, raise your hand. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with it, right? I don't think there's any way you're just going to disagree with me, but let's go through it. Imagine our only task, right? Your only task. Let's take it out, and I intentionally take it out of the pitching realm, right? Too, too close. It's just For some of you head coaches, it's still uncomfortably close. I could have been something else, but all right. Our only task was to improve the defensive ability of your two or three first basemen. Let's say you have two. Some of you guys go, well, I only got one. Okay, you're one. Hope, hope he doesn't get sick <laughs> or fail a class. <laughs> All right? But let's say you have two or three first basemen during the season. During the season, right? And I'm going to pay you $1 million. You're like, one million? Yes, $1 million if you can show me clear and objective improvement in all the following nine areas, right? I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to go through them. If you do that, it's a million dollars. I know Coach Foley's going to ask me for this guy's name, so he can, he'd like to get a shot of that $1 million, right? Now, but if not, if all nine were not improved, you get bupkis. You get that much. So now I do that because now in our thought approach, how, how motivated are you to make sure that happens? So now motivation is taken care of. All right, now here are, the, here are the nine categories. Now you tell me, you baseball guys, tell me if this is, you like this, right? 5% or more improvement, and we'll, we'll measure it, 5% or more improvement, we'll do a base test and then we'll do a post test, right? 5% improvement in their ability, first base ability to receive thrown balls that are cutting, sinking, tailing, sailing, and get and keep their foot on the bag. So we're going to throw balls at them like this, like that. And they're going to work on that. Think of Steph Curry, right? It's the same thing. How difficult can we make it? Balls going everywhere, kind of like how your shortstop does it now. So now they get 5% better at being able to catch that ball and put a foot on the base, right? 5% improvement in their ability to pick or save throws that are bounced, balls in the dirt. They pick them better, right? Over here, over here, short, long, medium hops. 5% improvement in their range and footwork around both sides of the bag be able to handle and receive pickoffs. So if they're, they're getting a throw, they can cover a little bit more over here and they can come over a little bit more over there. So they're broader on the throw, right? 5% improvement in the ability to stretch to get to the ball sooner on close plays. When it's appropriate, we can make a bang, bang on the close play. 5% improvement on speeding up the quickness of a tag on tag plays and pickoffs, right? 5% improvement on their ground ball range when they're playing for, right? 5% improvement in their ability to catch foul balls, fly balls in foul territory. Be able to get to the fence, be able to get to the ball, be able to get over there, be able to take a ball away from the catcher instead of going, oh, my bad. You should have got that. Or 5% in their ability to start a double play and get the lead runner or ground ball at second base. Get the ball, get the guy out, right? What does that say? Thank you. You have to make that darker. I'm 64 years old. I have no idea. Look, 5% improving their ability to cut and accurately relay throws to the catcher with pace and on target. Now, Coach Kennedy, is that like, you like the sounds of that? Everybody like the sounds of that on your first baseman? Now, is that possible? I think, I think it is. Right? Now, you only have one. You, I, know, I know what you're saying. Well, I've got everybody. I'm, I know. For this thought experiment, it's just one guy. Right? Do you think if this, those nine specific task description goals were met or exceeded, would this have a very positive outcome to the success of your team? What do you think? If you're a pitcher, you're sure like, you're like, yeah, I'd like to have that out. Instead of it going to the fence or it's dropped or anything. Right? That's, that's a big thing, right? The million-dollar incentive should should prove sufficient for most people to be very committed. If you're guaranteed all in, 
any and all equipment that you needed, the space you needed to work, and 30 to 45 minutes every day during the season to do your work, do you think you'd have an excellent chance at reaching those goals and making a real impact? I think all of us would say yes. <clears throat> Therefore, if we clearly defined our goals for impact, it made absolute sense to us. Now, maybe you want to add some more. Do you thought is there something else more important in that? If you're a first base guy, and I'm sure I'm not a first base guy, I'm a pitcher. I just know what I would like to have when I'm pitching over there, right? Truly motivated and committed to make those changes. If we had time and resources, our chances for incredible impact on our first baseman and by extension, the success of our, high, uh, our team would be incredibly high. Now, if this is true, why aren't we doing this? That's a hell of a good question, isn't it? If that's true, then why aren't we doing this? Well, you can sit down, you're gonna give me a litany of, like I don't have enough staff, I don't have enough equipment, right? I think it sounds pretty straightforward. It's not way out of our skill set. And if we have a good idea and we, the rest we can figure it out. It sounds simple enough. It's not overly complicated. This is, goes back to a lot of now the, the recent camps and coaches camps that we go to, they're really getting you know, the motor learning part of it in there, and they get all that, and the technology part, and that's all good. That's very advanced. I tell you, the game is still a simple game. And if we don't, just like, like I said, the, the previous one, if we do not take care of the essential element details of it, we're gonna fail. It's still a simple game, and we have to execute at the very fundamental, as, as um, uh, Bruce Lee said, I fear not the man who can make 10,000 kicks, but I fear the man who can make 10, uh, made one kick 10,000 times. You want to master, so, is, so here's your note for this morning before we close and have a coffee. Your goal, I think, for your pitchers is for them to master the things that are going to matter most for you to win a baseball game. Master them. And we all talk about, we all talk about command. It all comes back to that. We always, always want a guy that throws like Nolan Ryan and throws and blows everybody up, and I, I think that's great. But we all talk about command, but what do we do about it between starts? Bubkiss is what we do. We do catch play, we, do, we just dabble at that stuff. So how frequently is something like this being done? What do we do instead? We do what everybody else does. Go back to the first baseman. They, did, they hit fungos during BP. Now, I'm not against fungos during BP, but that sure the heck isn't going to make you a golden glover. We already know a fungo hit ball is not anything like you're going to get in the fifth inning. When the game's on the line, you get that squirrely ground ball. Why don't we practice that one? We do what we've always done with a few new things thrown in to feel progressive. And we are yearly repeating a search for athletes that already do these things and in essence don't need to be trained or coached. I've said this and I'll say this again, right? And we hope that at crucial moments, anybody here relate to this? We hope, you send out your picture and you go, oh dear Lord, I hope it works out. Dear Heavenly Father, right? Crucial moments in our season, our first base play comes through and at least doesn't kill us. Right? And the beat goes on. So that's just first base play. What about the stuff that is absolutely far more critical to actually winning a baseball game? If anybody ever doubts pitching is the single, not even close, the single most important thing to win in a baseball game, all you have to do is pay attention to this. If you're betting on a game, and I know Isaiah loves to do it, What's the single most important factor on the odds you're going to get in a baseball game? Who's pitching that day? That's Vegas. Vegas will tell you the truth. Because there's this on the line. You have Verlander throwing, there's your odds. If you had Ron Wolforth throwing, the odds are completely different. The Astros are still the same. Bregman's still playing third. Pitching. Right? Run, in other words, run prevention. Why do you think the Rays are so good? They get this. Right? 
So how are we with that? So there's hitting, scoring runs, run production, everything else defensively, like our first base play. I think the next short thing under the pit, now this comes from a pitching guy, right? So I'm biased, is catching directly assisting the pitching. I have seen just crap catching over and over and over again at every level. Crap catching hurts pitching, period. Your pitcher can't be as good. That's the reason, that's the reason Verlander goes, I want him. That's the reason Garrett Cole goes, no, 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 I want him. That's the reason Greg Maddox went, no, I don't want Javi Lopez. I know he hits 30 home runs a year. I could care less. I want him, right? He's going to give me the best chance to win. Catching is the second important thing, and then pitching, right? So what keeps us from breaking through? When I return, we're going to take a little bit of break, and when I return, we're now going to start getting into the application of this, right? But I wanted to set the foundation for this. This is how important it is. This is what we can do. This is how the change is going to be, right?